Oh, hello, my dear friends. This is our regular Friday uh, live interview. And today we have an absolutely marvelous guest, Dr. Shilpa Saxena, who is a functional medicine doctor practicing in Tampa, Florida. And she's done so much work uh, in the functional medicine realm. She is a uh, lecturer, teacher uh, through the Institute of Functional Medicine where I first met her. And she's an amazing teacher. She's also done a lot of work with group uh, visits and really uh, is probably almost one of the pioneers in that in the functional medicine realm. So let's welcome Dr. Saxena. Hey. Hi, how are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, that's great. Great. And it's uh, sunny and humid in um, Florida. <laughs> as, as it is for most of the year. Yeah, I know. We're, we're pretty lucky here in Colorado that it hasn't been, you know, terribly hot, although today is going to be another hot day. But listen, I'm grateful for you. And I've, you know, I've always admired your work. You were one of my teachers and uh, uh, I'd love to go back and watch those uh, sessions uh, with you through the uh, training program to the Institute of Functional Medicine. So could you tell us a little bit about how you got started in functional medicine? Sure. So I actually was trained as a board certified family medicine physician. I worked for someone else for three years, quickly learned <laughs> that this kind of conventional model was not really fulfilling. I felt, I even said on my first day, I felt like a legalized drug dealer is really what it felt like. Just 24 patients, 18 of which I, I worked in an underprivileged area, um, needed a refill of Lortab, Xanax or Soma. And I just realized there's something missing in healthcare. So I set out to you know, make the kind of medical office I thought should be existing. So I opened a small office in Lutz, Florida, which is a small little rural town north of Tampa. And sooner or later, patients started coming in and I was very interested in knowing what they were doing for their health. And I learned that many of them were taking supplements that I had not been trained on. Mm. So instead of saying no, which is I think what many physicians sometimes do when they don't understand something, instead of saying no, I said, I don't know. And then I started a quest to learn more about it. And what I realized was, gosh, these things kind of work. And then there's evidence behind them. And then I just became, you know, just voracious about learning about it and implementing it more importantly. And I, I was recognized by one of the IFM faculty members for the way that I was implementing this in this small rural town and getting great results. And that's how I kind of came into the faculty role as well. Oh, that's amazing. That's sort of how I got started in my journey from traditional pediatrics uh, into, uh, well, not immediately into functional medicine, but it's like, I got tired of writing prescriptions for Ritalin. And I said, there's got to be a better way. You know, we're yeah. just drugging these kids without trying. I didn't know the word at the time without getting to the root cause. But anyway, that's how many of us got started, really uh, realizing that we weren't trained even in nutrition. You know, I didn't know anything about nutrition. I certainly didn't know how to use uh, supplements. Uh, so anyway, that's great. So now... Tell us a little bit about what you're doing now, like with the group visits, because you, I love the work you're doing. Yeah. So what happened was in this rural town, word got out that I was open minded and that I wasn't going to kind of uh, tell people that they couldn't do what they thought was working for them and that I would be a partner. And uh, then I hired an advanced practice provider and everything was going well. I had around 4,000 patients that we managed between the both of us, which is a very typical load for an insurance-based family medicine practice. Um, many people are surprised to usually hear how many patients an insurance-based doctor actually oversees. Yeah. So there we were, and she became pregnant and was going to need the very fair amount of three months off. And I had you know, two young children of my own. And I thought I'm not willing to work double time to manage the patients. I researched some journals and found out there was this concept called group medical appointments, where you gather 10 to 16 people in a room. And what works in the conventional world is you would just talk about really more the management of their disease. 
And I just thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if we gathered them and talked about the root cause of their disease and really had around 60 to 90 minutes to talk about nutrition or exercise or how to take fish oil properly, how to read a food label. And so my functional medicine or lifestyle-based group medical appointments were born. And I am kind of a wannabe artist. So I started creating PowerPoints yeah. with them just because I like to teach with pictures and just, you know, simple analogies. And then, you know, the funny story is, and I don't know if you know this, Wanda, but when I was invited to be faculty with IFM, I was going to be on stage with like two functional medicine giants, Dr. Mimi Guaneri and Dr. Mark Houston. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, uh, I don't belong on this stage with them. And I remember Lori Hoffman, the CEO of IFM at the time said, well, do you have a book? And I'm like, I don't have a book, you know, because Mimi had a book and Mark had a book. And I thought, well, then look, I'm like completely not credible. I don't have a book, you know, just because I was in the trenches. So I'm like, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll take these PowerPoints that I've made over these three months plus because people still wanted to do them and I'll create little kits for physicians. And honestly, it was an ego based need for me initially to just feel like I belonged on that stage. And what happened incidentally was that people are like, that's really cool. We'd like to learn how to do that. And that's kind of how the whole thing happened. Oh, yeah, that's amazing. I've seen some of those videos and they're just precious. I love the the one on immune health. You, you talk about the soldiers guarding the the moat or whatever. <laughs> yeah. That's great. You know, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I interviewed uh, Laura Saylor and she, you know, she's so creative and she has inspired my creativity so much. You know, I haven't had the time to do all the things she's done, but you know, that I, one of the things that I really love about functional medicine is the ability to educate our patients, you know, because we have to educate them because they've been to the regular doctor and told no matter what their problem is, well, you're just going to have to take this drug for the rest of your life and never any thought about, you know, what they're eating. You know, I've asked patients, well, did your gastroenterologist suggest that you modify your diet in any way? Oh, no, they just said, you know, don't eat what makes you feel bad or something like that. But, right. you know, so can you say a little bit more about functional medicine and what makes it different than the conventional traditional method? Of course. So, you know, there's an intuition that most of us have and that, and I don't mean it providers, I mean us humans have mm -hmm. that when I kind of describe it as like looking at a mango tree, I just happen to like mango. So I use the mango tree example. So if I'm looking at a mango tree as a representation of my body or a patient's body, and I see, oh, there's quite a few yellow leaves on multiple branches, and then a few of them are not even bearing like delicious ripe fruit. I mean, I don't have to be a master gardener to get that there is not a branch problem. Like there's something going on in the soil and the roots and the air with the sun. You know, there's something else. There's something missing in the soil, or there's something that that needs to be put in there or something present in the soil that needs to get out so that that mango tree can function at, at all branches. And so functional medicine to me is just common sense. Like if you see too many branches not working as well as they should, then you need to dig deeper. So I just didn't have the architecture and the organizational skills to know how to look into that. So what the Institute for Functional Medicine did was give me an algorithm to be able to identify and address those underlying causes of disease and then just make it, you know, the art part of it that I find is partnering with the patients and bringing back that kind of healing relationship between, you know, the provider and the patient. And, and it's so not about the provider having the domain of power. What I think is most beautiful and the you know the most gratifying part of the art piece is when the power is handed over to the patient and the patient accepts it with you know grace and courage and then takes it they takes the information and then starts to heal themselves with these principles. Yeah, and they then have 
the tools and the understanding to continue to grow in their health that you know and I, i've been thinking a lot about what my purpose in life is mm -hmm. and one of them is to help people find that they have a purpose in their life and that no matter how big or small it may be it's good and it's it brings life to them you know if they are living on purpose then they're happier and they're more likely to do things that are going to support their their physical being and their mental and emotional being so you know functional medicine to me is like having a road map when you don't know exactly where you're going so you don't get lost and you know just following a practical understanding uh, of the lifestyle factors that uh, play such a role and especially nutrition you know i've been thinking about you know everything starts in the gut and so we have to start there too is you know it's a fr we put things into our gut and then they it goes out to the rest of the tribe so or the rest of the branches and leaves so can you um tell us a little bit more about this idea that you you mentioned and i i posted it that the doctor can have all the knowledge in the world and be an expert in everything but if they can't communicate that to the people that they're serving, then nothing happens. So can you sp say a little bit about your role in educating doctors and nurses and other healthcare practitioners? Yes, yes. So, I, you know, I, I, I realized this when I was right out of residency in my first job. And again, I was working with some of the underserved and underprivileged in rural and urban Jacksonville, Florida. And there I was committed to educating patients. And I do think that it was more limited because I had maybe 10 to 15 minutes to do the whole kit and caboodle of diagnosis, education, and all the you know transactional things you have to do with prescriptions and documentation. And so what I really learned in that experience is uh, I could educate the patients and that is very important. And then I thought, well, but if they can't put it into practice, I don't know if I really accomplished much, right? So I use the same principle when I'm training providers or any clinician, any healthcare professional, like you can know a lot of stuff, but if you don't know how to do it, how to actually put it into practice, if I'm not, if I'm not helping you also do the doing of it, then there's really no change for the patient or the person you're serving. So here's a classic example from a leadership um, training group that I go to, which is so, it's just so simple and obvious. So I'll kind of do the exercise with you if that's okay. Sure. Yeah. So how many, um, how many people do you think know, do you think most people know how to lose weight? No. <laughs> what, do they know what to do? I don't think they really know. The first thing they think that they have to stop eating you know, starvation. And, you know, that doesn't usually last very long. Well, what I would, what I would assert is most people know that there is some combination of looking at nutrition and exercise that could likely help them lose weight. Now, what that is, which diet, how much, all that. But I think most people, and, and, you know, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but I think most people know that they should probably look at nutrition probably yeah, look at physical activity in order to lose weight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. And so the next question is knowing that how many people actually do what they know? I think that, you know, my patients, I think try, but somewhere along the line, they get confused. You know, what, what is the best, what is the best kind of food to eat and about exercise also, you know, if they're overweight, you know, what can I do to safely exercise without hurting myself and without getting so discouraged that I won't do it at all? So I think, you know, showing them and educating them is really of prime importance. Right. And I, this is the, the point is, is that, and, you know, you and I have special patients. It's a small fraction of the entire population that chooses lifestyle as their therapy you know, a majority of the American population is still under the belief system that disease just happens and you just have to wait for it to be diagnosed. Hopefully you get it diagnosed early enough to get the right medication prescribed. And that is kind of the 
cultural mindset, like a, almost like a fatalism, you know, genetic fatalism is what they have. So in their mind and in what you see out in the world is, okay, I know how to do diet and exercise. I mean, somebody told me I should eat more vegetables and somebody told me I should walk, you know, 30 minutes, but very few people do it. And so knowing has really no relationship to doing until there's this activation and empowerment. And that's what we do as functional medicine providers, maybe unknowingly in that therapeutic partnership. Like we don't just give a sheet of paper and say, eat this. We educate, we empower, and then we help with the challenges and roadblocks with partnership. Just like you said, like, okay, that's great that you know you're supposed to exercise. Okay, but you have this knee pain. So how can we modify so that you're empowered to still go out and do the safe physical activity it'll take to protect your knee and yeah. move the weight so you don't have diabetes, for example? Yeah, and that to me, I tried to institute uh, group visits in the middle of the pandemic, which oh. it, it, we didn't do it in person. We did it online. Yeah. And I'm I'm eager to really get started in person as we get a little safer, safe, uh, safer. But the cohesiveness that comes from a group of people who have similar problems coming together to uh, learn something new and then to practice it and come back the next week and share what they learned and to help each other. Uh, so are you doing group visits in person now? Um, not right now, just yet. We're still doing virtual. Uh, you know, as as you know, I'm in Florida, so there's a little bit of volatility here, off and on during the COVID pandem pandemic. Um, so we've actually, since COVID began, uh, been doing virtual group visits. I'm actually part of an organization called Form Health, and it is a nationwide network of functional and integrative medicine physicians. So what's real interesting is, is we're pooling people with similar um, issues, just like you're saying, and we're doing like virtual Zoom group visits, very similar to how families get to uh, gather across the US or across the world, but we gather and it's real interesting how well the Zoom software allows for virtual group visits. And we're doing it on the subject of mental health which is yeah. really interesting. You see like on Zoom, you can actually hide your camera. You can put a different name. Um, so it actually gives a lot of privacy to people who may not otherwise show up on site. So I think it's a, on site is the magic that you know happens when humans get close to other humans. Like there's just, in my belief system, a different kind of energetic transfer that occurs yeah. when humans are face to face. However, there are some subjects like mental health that keep certain individuals from signing up for a group medical appointment on site. And I thought it was really interesting the way we are doing these virtual group medical appointments. We have a host and myself. So the host actually is a brain biochemist and health coach. And then her and I run the group visit, but she as the host or facilitator will also take private chat questions so when a person doesn't feel comfortable asking a question like out loud and, and, and potentially outing themselves with the question, they can privately message her and then she'll ask the question on their behalf. So it's another level of privacy yeah. that they have, which has just worked out to be wonderful. We didn't go in thinking this, but it's like the Zoom software just worked out real nice, especially for kind of a, a bit of a... A sticky subject like mental health, even though it's so much better than it was 20 years ago, it's still got some taboo around it. Yeah. So is this for, uh, yeah, forum health? <clears throat> is it just locally there with your patients or is it open to anybody who wants to sign up for it? We actually have non-patients who will participate in some of our programs. So we have providers who are outside the network who will refer patients into this program, it's called our Brain RX program. And what we do is, you know, we educate, we um, use the health coaches to interview patients and walk them through a program that restores amino acids so they can make neurotransmitters. So oh, things really? like theanine or 5-HTP or GABA, 
these kinds of things that people are really depleted in. Because the other thing is, you probably know, all this stress has really taken down people's digestive systems. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, so we've got this vicious cycle happening with the mind and the gut. And the gut you need to be healthy to be able to absorb the amino acids to make the neurotransmitters your brain needs to be happy, calm, and alert. So yeah, we are we are wanting to make this available to uh, many more people outside of the network too, because mental health is 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 increasing now. Mental health issues are increasing. Uh, this pandemic has not really done us a a great service with decreasing mental health issues. You know from all ages, so. So how would people, if they're interested in this, get in touch with this? Um, uh, would it come through a doctor? Uh, it could be through a doctor. I think that's always recommended because I believe that, you know, whenever possible, it makes sense to partner with someone who knows what you're doing. Having said that, we have patients who are not a part of a functional medicine practice, but are interested in it. So I think if anybody is interested right now, they can email us at tampa at forumhealth.com. And then we could surely work with them and or their provider so that you know everybody's in the loop like it's almost like a, a team effort if they have a provider who wants to be a part of it that would be awesome and if they oh. don't have someone who understands the language of functional medicine we still want to support them okay so it's tampa at forumhealth.com yeah okay. that's my I'm office's done. email and then you know if you just kind of say the term brain rx then we'll know what you need Brain RX. Tommy, can you put that up there? Yeah, brain and then the R is capitalized. But listen, if you spell anything that looks like that, then we'll know what you're interested in. Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't know about this, so I'm going to check it out too. Okay, so uh, is there a website? There is. So, oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. So try forumhealth.com forward slash brain rx okay tom tom is listening okay great put, put that up there and it'll be in the uh uh comment box here in a minute did you get that tom if there not you go. just go to tampa at forum health there, there you, go. you go okay so we got that information there that's great okay. you know i think that one of the reasons i wanted to interview you is because of the group visits, you know, yeah. um, and, and plus all the other wonderful things that you do. Such a good, you know, you're such a good teacher. You know, Thank I can you. go back and remember all the things you said and, you know, be sure you do this and be sure you do that. And it was just great education that comes through the Institute of Functional Medicine is just really powerful. So uh, that's great. Now, is, is there anything else that you would like the people who are watching now or going to watch this recording later about functional medicine and why it is such a powerful way to help people heal? Wow, gosh, I could go on forever about that. Um, and it's a functional medicine to me is just good medicine. I don't even like to consider it different than what healthcare is. It's surely not what's being practiced in healthcare. And there's kind of a joke that I say in some of my other presentations, and I, this is how I open some of my talks with doctors. There's two things missing in healthcare, health and care. And really, functional right. medicine is about delivering on that promise of healthcare. It's really directed towards creating health. This is a very big difference in managing disease. Yeah. So functional medicine accepts that health is possible, like vibrant, full health is possible. And if you can't get to the maximum health that you may want for yourself, there is still possibly and probably a higher health level than what you're experiencing today that you can achieve. So number one, functional medicine makes sense because it actually is health focused, not focused on disease management. So it has hope in it. 
And the other thing about functional medicine is it has care. So care is, I'm not talking about transactional fast food medicine care, which is what the system has kind of created. And I don't think anybody wants it this way. I don't think anybody's trying to create a structure, but somehow the incentives and the way it's you know kind of default become, it feels a little bit like fast food medicine to many people, yeah. whether it's the patients or the providers, the nurses, like many people feel this way about the care delivery in modern healthcare. Functional medicine really depends on a therapeutic partnership between the patient and the clinician. And see, that kind of partnership is the, the soil where power comes from. And the power should not reside with the provider. The power needs to transition from the provider over to the patient because the patient's the one doing all the work to get to the health. I mean, right. I could give you all the information in the world, but if you don't feel empowered to act upon it, the results will not change. So really functional medicine gets that the power is not with the doctor or the provider, the power is with the patient. And then it has a whole curriculum on how we engage with our patients so that we can transfer that power over. Because it's not something natural for most patients to take on. They've just been almost acculturated to think, okay, I'll go into the doctor's office, they'll diagnose me. Then, well, I actually have a little funny way of you know describing what happens in most doctor's offices, not functional medicine, but most kind of conventional medical offices. It's kind of a name it, blame it, treat it, street it. Right, like so, you name the issue. Like you have ADHD, then we blame it like bad ADHD. Then we treat it with Ritalin, and then we treat it like see you later. And then they come back, and then either they're better, or worse, or the same. And then you name it. Oh, this is ADHD uncontrolled. Then we blame it. You know, like, and we just keep doing that little factory thing, and it just doesn't make sense that the naming of something is the goal of a healthcare visit, right? Absolutely. And you know, one thing that, that I love about functional medicine is it makes sense. Yeah. You know, it makes sense. You know, if X happens here, Y is going to happen here. And what do you do to uh, keep that from happening so that, that the whole organism is working together? It's, it's almost like a dance, you know, and I, I tell patients that if you only understood how fantastic your body is, and how it knows what to do if we allow it to and and remove the things that are causing the problem. You know, it, it's a, a lot about removing and then putting back in to the system what it needs. So anyway, you know, it is, I keep getting, I keep falling in love with what I do more and more, even as I get older, you know, and I'm just passionate about helping people reclaim their life you know and i know some of them are going to are already have done it but a lot of people especially our our beautiful women have, have are so unempowered that part of my job is to give them the power so yeah yeah you can do this one little step at a time That's so right. it's um gosh you know, we're fortunate aren't we to be able to work in this field that has the potential to help so many people. Really? And I think it's what we thought we signed up for. Yeah. And then we didn't get like what we thought, like healing is what I thought I signed up for. And, and what I saw instead was kind of more treating. And what yeah. functional medicine allows us to do as people who really were committed to the service of healing is to heal. And there's so much fulfillment in that. And, and I love that it's not just fulfillment for us as the clinicians. There's the fulfillment of those patients who see their power and then see how like wonderful their body is and how much their body is trying to help them. They just need your help with daily choices. You know, like, help me out, brother. Help me out, sister. I'm here for you is what the body's usually saying. Isn't that true? Yes. You know, to, to I think there is a a, a quote in the or, Organon written by Samuel Hahnemann in uh, uh, 
homeopathy is something like, you know, the purpose of life is to use this reason gifted mind to move this beautiful body into action to be who you are in the world. I mean, that's mm -hmm. my, my take on it, but yeah. So gosh, is there anything else before I, let's see, Tom, are there any comments or I don't see any right here. Sometimes people are afraid to ask a question, but okay. ask a question right now. You got the expert here. <laughs> Anybody want to comment, ask a question? I don't see any right now. Okay. Is there anything closing you would like to say to the world? To the world. Yeah. You know, I, I would love to leave you with a little sticky way to maybe look at functional medicine in a nutshell. Um, if that helps, I'm, I'm all about sticky little stories or sticky little, you know, acronyms that help us remember big things, big principles. Yeah. So I've come up with a mnemonic called goodness. So think of the word good. And then after it, all capital N E S S. So most of us are kind of aware that we should have good nutrition is the N, good exercise is the E, good sleep is the S, and good stress management. So those would be like the four pillars of lifestyle that most of us are familiar with. So you can think of goodness, but I'd like for you to look at the word good in one other way and think about it like you've gotta be good with yourself. And what do I mean by that? Now I want you to look at the word goodness and instead of going across with N-E-S-S, -S, I want you to think of the word good and then underneath it, write M-E-S-S. -S. Okay, so that's your mess. So in order to be good with yourself, you have to have mental health, which means your thoughts need to be healthy, emotional health, which is your feelings should be healthy. Then you should have social health, which is that sense of belonging and then spiritual health, being connected to something greater than yourself. Maybe God, it might be trees, it could be volunteering, just something greater than yourself. And so what I find is that when you're getting stuck on the goodness, there's usually an opportunity for you to clean up your mess. Because if your mess is not in order, it's gonna interfere with you being able to get to your nest, right? Like. Usually, like, you know that you're supposed to eat a certain way, but there's usually something in your mess that gets in the way of you getting all powerful about your nutrition or exercise. So think of that as a sticky mnemonic. Goodness is what you're aiming for. And if you're not getting to it, you got to clean up your mess. I love it. I hope I can remember that. Tom, I hope you took notes so we can post it. That is beautiful. And, you know, that's just the creative mind, you know. We have such a creative mind. Anything is possible. I like to tell patients, I, I say, try to imagine the life that you want to be live. Imagine the body that, that's really there, you know, the template is there. Just yeah. keep thinking about it. Imagine it. Seeing yourself being able to move gracefully through life. Seeing yourself in a, in a, in a more ideal weight, that, you know, yes. without getting crazy about harsh diets and things like that. Wow. So you are just a delight. And I feel absolutely I'm inspired by what you're doing here. I, I feel honored that you agreed. I, I thought of all the people that I wanted to interview and I just started putting out little messages and lo and behold, you responded. So I can't thank you enough. And oh, goodness. Uh, you just proved it. You can manifest it. I know that's true. Right? So you think so you become, you just did it yourself here and, you that, just it, and here it is. And that's true for all of our folks out there. You that's know, right. what's in your mind can get out pictured in your life. So anyway, we're going to remember that mnemonic and put it on. Uh, maybe I'll create a little Canva print or something and put it up. Okay. Sounds awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I will see you again someday soon, hopefully. Okay. Yes. Yes. I look forward to the day we can all be together again.